everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye a bunch of different yarn bases that are only loosely related to one another with the same colors and the same techniques, and we're going to see how they turn out. The four bases we are going to dye today are Knit Picks Luminance, which is 100% silk, Wool we'll Design Force Yak DK, which is 65% Superwash Merino, 20% silk, and 15% yak. Uh, Wool to Dye Force BFL Silk Sock, which is 55% Superwash BFL, 45% silk. And then finally, one of my regular yarn bases, Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. Three of the bases do have some silk content, and three of the bases do have some Superwash wool component as well. But given that the fiber contents are different, and one of them is not the similar bare white color, I expect that using the same amount of dye and the same colors will get somewhat different results here. Before I talk a little bit more about our project, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Lindsay. Lindsay, thank you for being my lab partner today, and I'm very excited to see where this project goes. Now, my plan is to do a two-step dye process on all of these colorways. First, we are going to dip dye the yarn into a color. And to help make sure we have the same amount of dye on each of our skeins, I'm going to dip dye each individual yarn base individually. Uh, and so where the deepest color is versus the lightest color, that will likely vary from yarn to yarn, but we know that the same total amount of dye for this first color will be on all of the skeins. So even if they absorb the color a little bit differently, uh, there will be, again, the same total amount of pigment, assuming they all absorb the pigment that we're adding. <laughs> And then after that, we are going to speckle on all of them. And I'm on the fence a little bit, but I think that I will probably speckle uh, using some dry powder mixed with citric acid so we can attempt to get some finer specks on this yarn. And then we will steam set it all together. But my hypothesis is that once we get to the speckling, the luminance will have the color spread a little bit more than the others. But again, we won't know until we try this out. To get ready to dye the yarn, the first thing I did was add removable nylon zip ties to each of the skeins. And now I need to pre-soak the yarn. Typically fibers with silk need a little bit longer of a pre-soak if you want to get even color coverage. And so I'm torn between wanting to let this soak overnight or just giving it a couple of hours. I definitely want to give it at least a couple of hours. And so I'm going to set a timer for, I think, 90 minutes, and then we'll check back in and see how it's doing. But typically, you want the silk to start looking a little bit translucent, and that's when you know it's nice and saturated. But I suppose if it's not perfectly saturated, that's not the end of the world. I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask Safety Glasses and Gloves and started measuring out some of Paradise Fiber's Blue Acid Dye. I measured out 0.25 grams of this color for each of our skeins, so I did this four times. It probably would have been easier for me to just make a dye stock and then measure out some liquid, but this way I didn't have to pay much attention to the volume of liquid I dissolved the dye into. And I dissolved this dye with some hot tap water. I decided to start with blue because I thought that it would show up well on the Yak Blend and on the other bases as well. And then once we see what that yarn looks like, we can decide what kind of speckles we want to do on top. But I think my thought right now is I want to do a combination of speckles without citric acid and speckles with citric acid. I have two dye baths set up, each with 16 cups of water and four tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm going to add our blue dye. Using this little dye dissolved super easily, but I'm still going to go ahead and rinse out the container just so that way we leave no dye behind. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the Knit Pick Stroll just because this is the yarn base that I know the best. And I'm not sure how quickly or slowly this color may strike. 
but you'll notice I'm wanting to open up the skein because there was some resist in there. Now, the reason for starting with so little of the dye was so that way uh, it wouldn't be so much that we wouldn't be able to speckle on top after, uh, but it would be enough that we could get some nice coverage. And I think that this is going pretty well. You can see that we do have a deeper color at the bottom. If I started with half a gram of dye, the color at the bottom could have been so deep that it then would have been a lot harder to see. And here we are with about a minute total and just about all of the color has absorbed. Now, if I was gonna be done with this color wine, I would let it sit in here for about 30 minutes, but since we're gonna be dyeing it and then steam setting it later, but I will go ahead and give it at least 10 minutes just so that way we know we've absorbed all the color that we had in here. New pot with the same setup. And once again, I'm gonna add our dye and rinse out the cup. And this time we're gonna go for the Yak Silk Blend because I'm hoping that we have enough dye here that it should be visible on here. I would be sad if it wasn't. Oh yeah, the blue will be visible. Uh, I have not dyed this particular base before, but I have knit with it and I adored it so much that I also have a 10 pack in addition to this sample. Uh, the color is going a little bit further, I think. But with the silk blend, things sometimes go slower. And I knew things would go the fastest on our stroll. And so who knows if we will or won't need to add more acid here. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to take a little bit longer, although as I add in, it still looks like there's a lot of color in there, but there isn't really that much. Uh, but anyway, I have dyed uh, a yak counterpart that's fingering weight that doesn't have silk. And so I kind of wish that there was a silk version like this in the fingering weight, and that in the DK there was one without the silk as well, even though the silk is like super delicious. Oh, funny. I'm definitely getting the color over more of the yarn here, uh, and it's taking longer. I imagine, what, we have one with a higher silk percentage, and then the one that's 100% silk. I expect that last one will take the longest. But here we go after, you know, closer to two, over two minutes um, before we're finally starting to see it clear. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add all of the yarn to the kettle. We may end up with some more pastel blue along the top, but that is fine. And I'm gonna let it sit for uh, about 10 minutes as well, or until it looks like all that color has absorbed. It's been 10 minutes, and so let's look at our Yak blend first. That is looking very, very clear, so I am going to remove this and set it aside to cool. Um, it doesn't have to cool completely, but I want it to cool enough uh, for so I can comfortably handle it for speckling, but we still have the other two we have to dye. And we've got our stroll. I'm really glad I threw this in for comparison because uh, just nothing else will really compare to it. Uh, ooh, the color struck so fast. Uh, when we do the other bases, we're gonna use the same dye bath. And technically, technically, there will be proportionally a little bit less acid because we are adding more dye and a little bit more liquid as we rinse that out. But that shouldn't necessarily make a huge difference, but I did want to point that out. So now, let's come in and I'm gonna go rinse this carefully. The volume of liquid that you use to dissolve your dyes does not matter very much for a technique like this. It matters more if you're gonna be hand painting or similar. But now I'm coming in with the BFL Silk Sock. Ooh. And we'll see just how quickly or not this absorbs. I think that this one has a higher silk percentage than the Yak. Ooh, but look at the depth of color that we have there. Wow, that's looking pretty intense. 
uh, more intense than the stroll, which surprises me a little bit. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll find out my scale isn't very accurate. Uh, I mentioned this before, it would have been way more accurate for me to have made a stock solution and then um, aliquoted that out. Uh, even though I did measure out supposedly the exact same amount of dye for all of them, this one is looking way more intense than what I saw on the stroll. And so that is just surprising me a bit, but it's not a problem. <laughs> But yeah, I guess I should try another video where I do this again, um, but then we'll kettle dye and we can see the consistency for such a small volume. Uh, but I've been dip dyeing for over a minute so far and the color is starting to get lighter, but this looks to me uh, like there's a lot more pigment. Yeah, my scale is supposedly rated to go down to point zero one grams but the there's less accuracy I suppose or less precision when you're doing like small volumes like that but this like yeah this is just looking way 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 more pigmented to me than the same amount of dye but I guess I should add though in the past we've dyed things where we've compared silk with non-silk blends and it has looked more pigmented uh, the, at times while it was still wet and then it'll look less pigmented once it's dry. So we will see. But I'm gonna go ahead and add all of that in and I'm gonna let this heat for 10 minutes. Finally, we have our 100% silk and this is also looking like, I don't know, it's looking like a lot of dye to me. <laughs> But we'll compare all of them, right? Because truth of the matter is, if I wasn't doing them all these all at the same time, and I was doing them one at a time, hopefully our luminance is well saturated. But I was starting to say, truth be told, that if I was doing these projects one at a time, one by one, I would have measured out the die separately. And so that is one nice thing for doing that today. Now. I did end up pre-soaking everything overnight because I wanted to get, especially the silk, as saturated as possible. And ooh, this is so pretty, but the silk, I mean, if you look at this, it, you know, you're like, that still looks opaque. And yes, that is definitely true. It's not gonna necessarily look super, super clear, but the silk fibers do get a lot more see-through when they are wet and so therefore once they dry and they turn a little bit more opaque that's why the yarn will then look a lot lighter than it will when wet because you won't be able to see all of the dye that you could see before and I think that that's something that I've observed a lot more with silk uh, than with other fibers but right now um, at least this one is looking like as pigmented as some of the others. I mean, it's the stroll that I'm like, I'm feeling like there's a lot less, but maybe it's just because it all stuck uh, to one spot. But right now that's looking beautifully pigmented. Uh, so I'm not mad at it. Now, even if I was dipping them all at the exact same rates, we would have differences in the color. And that's because also the skeins are different lengths. So if I was dipping into two pots at the same time to try to keep things as similar as possible, uh, it would work, but yeah, it still wouldn't be exactly the same. One thing I will add is it still looks like there's a bunch of color in the pot, but you can see that as we dip in, you know, that is fairly pastel. And so it does take, it could be deceiving sometimes when you have little amounts of dye left over and you're like, oh, this looks like a lot of pigment. And then a lot of those leave no dye behinds, I end up with something super pastel. Uh, but anyway, this is still soaking up pretty quickly. I think a bit slower than all the others, but that's what I expected. I mean, this is the only one that has no superwash content in it. 
But while we are still dipping, because we might be doing this for a little while, let's talk about what we're gonna do next. Uh, we're gonna do some countertop speckles on all of the yarn. And initially I thought I was gonna mix all the dyes with citric acid, but in the June 2022 Chemnitz Dye Long live stream, I dyed some yarn using, I mean, it was immersion, but I used straight dye powder for some of the speckles. And then I used some black dye mixed with citric acid as speckles. And I love the juxtaposition of the super sharp and the larger splotches that we ended up with. And so I thought it could be fun to do that here. But I'm still not seeing the color kind of clear out of it. So what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna add more acid, which means that proportionally, uh, because when we go to speckle, uh, we, will ha we won't need to add more acid because functionally everything has pre-soaked with vinegar already. But our silk will have a little bit more acid in it, which I don't know if that'll affect any of the conclusions we will or will not be able to make. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out. But yeah, we have been dipping this one for closer to four minutes and the color is basically all gone. Uh, but just right off the bat, using the same technique on so many different bases, there are variations here already. But anyway, I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes, just like all the others. The times that it took to dip dye our various bases into the dye vary a bit. And I think that that already can help us conclude a little bit at least that different fiber contents can absorb dye differently. And this is something that I've said before, but it's a reason why if you are trying to replicate one of my recipes and you notice man, this is going like a lot different. Rebecca's yarn soaked up the dye so fast. Not having the silk there made a huge difference. And if our wool silk blends that we had were non superwash, then those would behave much slower as well. And so if something is going a little bit slower, sometimes you need a little bit more acid and that can help. Uh, but if you are enjoying uh, this side-by-side -side comparison of multiple yarn bases and want to see me do more videos like this, I have a lot of random samples and things I've collected over the years and I really should get to dyeing them. So please uh, make sure you're subscribed, turn on notifications first of all, but leave a comment below and let me know what other bases you would like me to dye with similar techniques in ways that them being in the same pan may not affect the final color because sometimes I'll do things immersion style all in one pan and people wonder if one of the colors is soaking up more color than the rest, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't, depending on how much water volume there is present. But anyway, uh, I love doing this. So uh, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> It has been 10 minutes and let's check and see. All right, the pot is looking pretty clear. I am going to set this aside to cool so then we can compare all the yarn. It's been 10 minutes and I just turned off the heat because we don't have another pot I am planning on doing. And there's maybe a hint of blue left in the pan compared to the others, but that's so little dye and I wanna treat things as similarly as I can. We're gonna go ahead and remove the yarn so it can cool. Here are the four dip dyed skeins. We've got our Stroll Luminance, the BFL Silk Sock, and then the DK, the Yak DK. And the Yak DK looks about navy and the blue gets lighter and lighter until about here or so, where I think it's the natural color. And the BFL Silk Sock follows a fairly similar pattern. Uh, the silk, the color goes all the way to the top. We had a little bit more coverage overall here. And then the Stroll, I mean, the thing is that the deepest color in the Stroll feels not quite as deep as the deepest color on these other ones. So that's what has me a little bit confused. 
but it doesn't really matter. Um, the goal is to attempt a comparison, and as I said, if we had been dyeing all of these in separate videos, this is the kind of result we would see measuring out the dyes separately. But now I am going to spread these out a bit uh, so we can get ready to do some speckles. And by spread out, um, I am sort of bunching up the yarn a bit so that way as I add dye, some of it can fall on a lower layer um, a bit. It's gonna take a little bit more time, I think, for our lace as I try to very gently scrunch this. The lace might take a little bit more need more coverage and same with the stroll but to the best of my ability I'm spreading it out and we are going to apply I think three different colors some paradise fibers yellow speckles some paradise fibers violet speckles and then some dharma true black acid dye that's already mixed with citric acid powder and I have a skein of some Knit Picks Swish DK that is 100% superwash merino and it has a little bit of blue on it because I added it to the pot um, with the residual color of that silk just so you can see how little color was left but there was some left and I'll be using this to wipe up the countertop and stuff when we are done. I think my plan is to attempt to keep the yellow mostly on the blue area and I'm not going to do a ton you can see there might be some overlap of them but I was curious to see how these yellow speckles may show up because when I've done a few more videos speckling with uh, a derma yellow dye one thing I mentioned is that doing yellow on top of a darker color would be pretty difficult just because uh, you don't won't necessarily see it very well but it could turn a nice green and so that's why I wanted to try it here today because I wanted to see how much it might feel yellow or turn green onto our yarn. I'm adding a little bit more and I'll go wipe this on the yarn mop. Now as we flip and move things around we might get some yellow transfer. We'll steam set these all together we could get some transfer between things but I just thought that this would be pretty fun. So as I pick up the dye I'm trying to use just little bits of it maybe with a little bit of some overlap but one of the reasons why I picked the violet color well that's a fair amount is that uh, I thought that it would show up on the blue no matter how dark or light it is now this guy here is a lot more likely to spread out a fair amount oh good I can see it on top of the yak. I might not be able to see the yellow, but it's good to know that I can see where I have placed the color. Maybe added a little too much, but that's okay. The colors will overall probably spread out uh, a fair amount from this non citric acid powder, but it also may not because in general, if you do countertop speckles followed by steaming, I find that my speckles tend to be sharper with a bit less spread, but it depends on how much liquid is still in the yarn. And so now, I'm also going to try to not go too all over with this, although I can't see it at all right now. But this is some of that true black dye mixed with citric acid powder. And the reason 
why I am trying to not go all over all over is I don't want to obsess about feeling like there isn't enough coverage uh, as we go through. But I am curious to see in the end if we see sharp black speckles on any of these or not. But I will say right now, and on the yuck, it's going to be really hard for me to tell if I can see it. Uh, right now it's just hard to say that it's there. And as we move the yarn around, it'll be a little hard to like know what we do and do not see. But I think I'm going to set a timer for five minutes so that way there's some time for things to get wet and soak into the yarn a little bit before we flip. But I'm also going to come uh, and zoom in a bit. So here on the BFL silk sock, you can see how tiny and sharp those black speckles look, at least right now. And that's because since the dye is sort of coating that citric acid powder, it can't spread uh, as much, or at least when you add it on, it spreads out more almost, right? So each individual dye with the acid there might strike faster, so the speck might remain smaller. But as you sprinkle the dye on, you can spread it further and get less of like a large sort of clump chunk that we see with the yellow and the purple. And right now in the luminance, you can see those itty bitty black specks as well. Uh, that is showing up fine. And they look to be pretty similar, to be honest. Pretty similar. The stroll's a bit farther away, but I'm glad we have this here as a control because if there was too much liquid or something in the yarn and these speckles spread out a ton, then we'll know <laughs> as we deal with our comparison how things are going, right? But interestingly, some of these yellow and I'm going to yellow speckles on the blue are looking rather yellow to me instead of feeling super green. That is very, very interesting to me because I have always said I didn't think it would work. And I mean, I suppose there's probably like a greenish hue, but it's working better than I expected. And that is incredible. After five minutes, I flipped the yarn over to start applying dye in a very similar pattern to the other side. When I flipped, in order to spread things out, I tried to lift and move versus rubbing the yarn on the surface as much as I could because rubbing the dye and the yarn against the surface could cause some of these speckles or small patches of color to spread more which would not be the end of the world at all, but that is something in general we would like to avoid. And so therefore, that's why I am doing my best to not rub. And we are gonna end up with a lot of color on the countertop, but that's what our yarn mop is for uh, in the end. I waited five minutes again and then checked and gently moved the yarn to get a sense of if I was happy with the coverage or if I thought I needed to add more dye. And then anytime I did add more dye, I tried to wait about five minutes before flipping. If you were to move the yarn a little bit sooner, it wouldn't be a massive problem. But if there's a lot of dye sitting on the surface of the yarn, when you move it, it has a bigger chance of spreading. Whereas if you let it sort of soak in and get wet and soak into the fiber first, you have a better chance of it staying where you put it. <laughs> And so I think that if I was just doing this with the citric acid powder dye, the weighting wouldn't necessarily be that important because by the time I finished speckling onto one, I'd be able to go back to the beginning again. Surprisingly, I think I'm okay with the coverage after just the two applications, which is not always the case. So I am going to carefully carefully take the yarn into two different steamer baskets. You may have noticed at the end me taking the yarn and sort of patting it down on the counter a little bit. That's to help uh, get some coverage on like a tiny spot where I felt like we needed more. So now to clean up, I have our yarn mop. 
And we may need to use some Lysol on here if those black dyes don't rinse up well. I will wipe down the floor as well, but it's rubbing the countertop technique. You know, this is a technique that I do a lot for cleaning up and like mopping. I think this is where like the mop term really came because here I'm literally mopping up all this dye. But have I ever done this kind of rubbing yarn mop intentionally? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Now, this doesn't get up all of the color. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But we did get a lot of that color here. And I'm actually really liking the yellow and purple here. All right, I'm going to set this aside until a steam about to clears up. And then in 30 minutes, we'll go remove the yarn. It has been 30 minutes. And that yellow is popping so much more than I was expecting. Maybe if I wanted it to be green, I should have picked a green. But you know what? I'm glad I did it because now we know. I do see some small sparkles on the silk. Uh, but I'm going to wait for things to cool so then we can have more conclusions and things will be less steamy. I'm going to off camera take the yarn out of the other steamy steamer basket. And once things are cool, then we can wash it. Let's wash all of the yarn together. And you can totally see that some of the speckles, especially some of that purple, have spread out a fair amount. I'm so impressed with that yellow, though. And let's bring in our yarn mop for good measure. I'm not anticipating seeing any bleeding here because we didn't really use that much dye. But what I'm more anticipating is that in the end, things are going to look a little bit different. I mean, the yak and the yarn mop are definitely different. But right now, I would say the deepest blue on the Luminance is very, very similar to the deepest blue on the BFL Silk Sock. Now granted, both of those have a pretty high silk percentage. Uh, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of some dish soap. Yeah, no color is coming out here. This is great. I do wanna be careful because I don't wanna like break or damage our silk or anything but a little bit of pressure should be okay. So here I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap, put all the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. Here we have the finished dry yarn. We have our Stroll, the BFL Silk, the Luminance, and the uh, Yak DK. And when we're looking at the deepest blue, especially of these three skeins, the Stroll actually does look deeper. It looks almost a little bit more red here on the BFL silk. And I'll zoom in. You can see there's some beautiful heathering there. And the 100% silk feels lighter than both of the other colors. And this is fairly consistent with what I tend to see with silk blends. Um, but it's just fun to see how different fibers take up the color differently. It may be a little hard to see here with this BFL silk, but you can see that the Superwash BFL, I think, took up more of the color than the silk. And so within the strands, you can see different colors, which may be a little bit hard to see because it also has a little bit of shine to it, but it's beautiful. Even on the Yak, when we have our yellow speckles, they feel more yellow than green, which has blown my mind a little bit because when you're mixing a green with yellow and blue, you need so much more yellow than the blue that I thought just a little bit of blue there might shift it green. And so this is pretty exciting. Now granted, the speckles over here on the stroll, a lot of them do feel a relatively green, but they're definitely not like an emerald green or anything like that. And so you could pretty much consider it a yellow, which is pretty fun. As for the small black speckles where we had the dye mixed with citric acid, on the Yak, you can just barely see some of them. Since the tone is so similar to the bare color, plus with a little bit of blue that made it a little more cool tone, those are incredibly subtle here. 
on the 100% silk. You can see them almost as some gray splotches, but they have spread out a bit. As we look at this BFL silk sock, um, there's still been a little bit of some spread, but I do see more of them being smaller than, say, the neighboring purple speckles. Finally, the black speckles are maybe a hair sharper on the stroll. Maybe they feel a little darker, but overall, I think that the mixture I did had a lot more citric acid than black dye, which honestly is always the case. But if I wanted the speckles to be more black versus gray, then I might want to make that ratio be a little bit closer together. But anyway, um, it's just one little example of how different fiber contents really do dye up differently. When I bring in our yarn mop too, I do want to add that I wasn't sure if I've done sort of like a yarn mop rubbing the skein on the counter on purpose, and I definitely have. I have a bunch of videos that I called a dry rub technique, where I started with dry yarn, and then I would rub it into wet dye that I would sort of squirt into the pan. So that I've done, but I don't know if I've done something similar with dry powder. And so, Editing Rebecca has already written this down for me, and if you'd like to see that in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Lindsay, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I love layering techniques on any regular day, but anytime I try to look at different yarn bases side by side, I learn a lot, and it's fun to just see how one technique that may be relatively simple may need some slight tweaks if you want to get the exact same colorway on each of them. For example, if I wanted the blue to sort of stop a little bit sooner on the silk blends, then maybe I should have started with a little bit more acid and things like that. But anyway, Lindsay, thank you again for being my lab partner today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I post at least twice a week, even over holidays, and you don't want to miss any of the fun videos. If you would like to support the channel in other ways, uh, you can become a channel member and get some fun custom Chemnitz emotes. I also have a Patreon and an Etsy shop. Links to everything will be down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.